and I think the next presentation, uh, which we're going to have from Shankuntula Thilsted, who is the research program leader at World Fish, uh, is going to be looking at how fish could play a greater role in the future as a global solution for this, this issue of, of climate change as well as food systems. Thank you. Um, I agreed with the organizers that I would, since I'm going to be the only speaker at this set event, I think, to be focusing on fish, that I would concentrate on the effects of fish, the benefits of fish, on hidden hunger in accelerating the fight and reaching the goals of the SDG2. Um, firstly, I want to give some benefits of fish because perhaps this is not known to all of you. Um, we know that uh, fish plays a role in the burden of diseases. We heard this from Jessica about diets, but we know particularly that there are meta-analyses that show that fish intake has, has, a, has a role to play in decreasing the disability in the daddies. We also know that in pregnancy and in the first six months of lactation, and that fish is important for neurodevelopment of the child, and we know it's also important for the health and the well-being of the woman during pregnancy. There's also a strong association between fish and stunting. There's, they, these are new analyses that have just been done by IFPRI, showing that from data from 46 countries, that of all the food groups, fish intake had the strongest association in stunting. And recently, some of our young researchers in, in Zambia looked at urban poor populations and saw that the intake of fish is associated with, with lower stunting rates. We've heard so much about the effect of uh, of we, uh, 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 we've heard so much about the rise in obesity and the effects that obesity has on health of, of populations. And there seems to be an association between fish intake and weight loss. Now, what many people do not know is that when you talk about fish, you hear about animal protein. But the, what's unique about many fish species is the high concentrations of minerals and vitamins. And uniquely for fish, and for, for, the, first, for the first thousand days, is the, is the essential fatty acids which are found in fish. If you take, for example, large parts of sub-Saharan Africa, and you look along, around the Great Lakes and the coastal populations, they use quite a lot of small fish. Much of this is also wasted. Some of it, quite a lot is used for animal feed. But we know that these fish species have high concentrations of minerals and vitamins. Not only are the concentrations high, but compared to plant source foods, the availability of these micronutrients are extremely high. And what many do not know is that fish has an enhancing factor on the other plant source foods on the plate. So if you have a little, pa pa little portion of fish with your rice and vegetables, you can enhance the bioavailability of the micronutrients from the rice and vegetables. We've looked at some of these common fish species in Bangladesh, and here I've chosen B B12 to show the effect of 
what a small portion of fish, 50 grams in a pregnant and lactating woman, and 25 grams per day in a child means in terms of meeting the dietary requirements for vitamin B12. And B12, as you know, is extremely important for neurodevelopment in children. And as you can see here, many of these common species, they meet the 100% requirement of vitamin B12. We've done the same calculations for some common fish species from Cambodia, and here I've chosen iron. And here too you can see, both for the woman and for the young child, that some of these common fish species meet a significant proportion of the recommended dietary intake for iron. Now, what's important is if you disaggregate the population groups into the poor and the non-poor, you'll see that for the poor, if you remove these common fish species from their diets, then you're removing significant amounts of micronutrients. And there are no other foods that can replace these micronutrients. So that's why I use the word that fish for the poor is an irreplaceable source of micronutrients. We have heard a lot about the transformation in diets and everybody wanting to have packaged foods and, and, and easy to prepare, um, easy to eat foods. So what we've done is we've taken some of these small fish and if you use them dry as you do in many countries in Africa, also in Asia, you can concentrate the micronutrients with a factor of five because you're removing the water. And this also means that you can have a longer shelf life. These products are easy to store and it overcomes the seasonality because we, do, we, we need to have proper diets, optimal diets year round. And this is one way in which you can increase the duration of, con of consumption. What we've also done is that in Bangladesh, we've used some of these um, dried fish products to prepare foods for pregnant women and for children, young children. And these products are now being piloted in the Development Food Assistance Program, which are being financed by the USA. And in Cambodia, We've using we've been using we have we are piloting the dried small favor fish as wafers, and these pro we've just not us but a small company private company in Cambodia has got a, has recently this month in fact got a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and they will be producing fish wafers which will be used by. The, by UNICEF and the Ministry of um, Health in Cambodia to treat malnourished children. This is quite a significant uh, transformation in the way that UNICEF is using fish because until now, milk was the only product that could be the food that could be used in the treatment. But they have just agreed because of the micronutrient content of small fish that fish can replace milk in the products that are used for the treatment of malnourished children. We've heard about food safety. The, the, the fight against the, the hidden hunger started with the International Conference of Nutrition in 1992, and we are still struggling with this. But at the second International Conference of Nutrition, there was a call for an action in food safety. And we know that particularly for fish, that there are issues with respect to food safety. But as well as we have been able to deal with this in a, as perishable food as milk, I do think that there are technologies and innovations that we can use to overcome the food safety issues of fish. 
we've heard a lot about waste and loss, and we've heard a lot, just this morning I saw on, on the BBC about how much more food is needed to, uh, to feed the world. But perhaps the point, the, 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 we should be looking at the reduction of waste and loss in order to supply the micronutrient rich fish that we need. And do not just look at the primary production. I've done, we all know that there's, the, with the Chicago Council putting out this report on food and waste, and we talk about one third of the food that's grown, that's produced is being wasted. I'm not really sure how true this holds for Africa and for Asia, but if you do a small, a small calculation, if you take, for example, Zambia, and you say that 1% of the fish that's wasted, quite a lot is wasted during drying. If that 1% is used, is waste, is 1% is saved, that amounts to 10 kgs of fish per person per year in, in Malawi, sorry. I said Zambia before, but in Malawi. And this means a lot for the intake of micronutrients, especially if this fish, as they are, as, as they are consumed, is consumed as dried fish. I have this one slide to talk about the changes that we see with, 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 with climate. So, a recent analysis showed that if you have ocean warmings, that there'll be a shift in the fish production and shellfish species from low to high latitudes. And this would potentially reduce the catch globally by more than 6%. And if you look at the countries around the tropics, that the catch would be reduced by more than 30%. Now, we must remember that in the tropics, that's where we have large amounts of, of vulnerable populations with high prevalences of micronutrient deficiencies. So this, this change in ocean warming can result in more than 10% of the global population facing micronutrient and essential fatty acids deficiencies caused by a decline in the fish in the fish in, in fish in these areas. And as I said before, this would be especially important in the trop tropics. If you take, for example, this part of the world where we have quite a lot of the fish being produced in the rice field fisheries, then what we what we what's being noticed is that there are erratic rains with the intensity and duration being changed. There are longer droughts and rising temperatures. And with just subtle rise in temperature, this can affect the feeds that the fish eat in the rice fields, and it can affect the breeding of the fish in the rice fields, both leading to a decrease in the fish supply. That's it, this is my life sign. So I have three action points which I've been asked to, to give, and these pertain particularly to fish. And I do think that we need to, and when I say invest, I just don't mean in terms of monetary investment, but also in capacity and other resources. So we should analyze the nutrient content and food safety of common fish species and fish products and most importantly, ensure that the data are open access. And knowing that there's this transformation of moving into products which are easy to use, ready to eat, then I do think that for the first thousand days, we should be looking at ways in which we can have fish products that can be used in pregnant and lactating women and young children and that at global and national level, that the policies and strategies and research should increase the access of an intake of micronutrient-rich fish, especially for the poor. Thank you.